don't go in again. Oh my God, how many shots have I hold with this club? That's ridiculous. So it's fair to say that the most surprising release of 2022 from, well, a brand that I least expected it from. You see, Ping has a rich history in producing some of the most user-friendly clubs out there. In fact, they've got some of the most forgiving products in virtually every category right now. But as user-friendly as Ping's lineup is, I must admit, when they told me that they were going to release a chipper, well, I was a little bit surprised, to say the least. And even more so when I unboxed this thing. But it did have one major problem in my eyes. So I think the big surprise was when I first actually tested this club. So overcoming how it looked and the surprise of how it looked, put into practice, well, that was quite a shock. And uh, I think many of you was impressed with the way it performed in my hands. And from what I've read in terms of the comments, a lot of you went out and either pre-ordered or went and tried them for yourselves. So I'd really like to know how you are getting on with this product right now, because the popularity of this thing is immense. And I know sales figures are incredible for it. And I must admit, where if we go back to when Ping said they were releasing a chipper, if they'd have asked me how popular I thought it would have been, well, I'd have never guessed the outcome would have been where we're at right now. But for all the positivity, Ping still had one potential downfall for me that we highlighted. And I still feel that there is an area which they could make this thing even better. Now we'll get to that potential downfall very, very soon. But before I do, maybe the fact is that it is the simplicity of the Ping chipper that makes it so effective. That one loft, that one swing type, if you like, that you just need to execute time and time again. Well, that could be the whole beauty of the club. So maybe the suggestion I'm gonna make, well, maybe that'll backfire, but I've got a solution. So in today's video, I'll be looking at another chipper. It's not too dissimilar in looks from the Ping version, but in fact, it offers four different loft options and it's from Amazon. So this is a club from Maisel. I'm actually using the club with 55 degrees worth of loft on it, but there are three other versions that you can possibly look to buy. And the interesting thing for me, it not only looks similar, not as good by a long way, doesn't feel as good, but it costs a third of the price of that of the ping. But the question is, is it any good? Right, now this is a typical scenario where this whole issue comes to light. And by having just the chipper with that limited loft causes a potential problem on why you might be able to fit it into the bag. And that's because we've got some obstacles in the way. Up at Hollywell Golf Club, there's a lot of uh, undulations and almost like grass bunkers. And you can see there's two in our way between ball and flag. We're about 30 yards away and this 55 degrees aloft that is on the um, there's on the Maisel chipper, I feel quite comfortable that we can pick this one up and throw it across the majority of uh, this uh, this terrain, I suppose, and get it there. And we're going to try very shortly. If I get this one right, we'll try the same shot with the ping chipper. So if that kicks on, that could be quite good. In fact. It's very good. That's done better than I could probably do with any other wedge in the bag. Um, what I like about it, it's, uh, it even grabbed a little bit, but we got exactly the kind of ball fly we were looking for, 20 yards worth of carry. Now, arguably the first thing I've got is by having that minimal loft, I don't even know whether I can clear the lip of this grass bunker in front of me. Um, but we've still got another hollow, another 10 yards further on. So we're going to set this one a little bit wider and see what happens. Well, by doing that, we avoided the, uh, the obstacles in the way. And to be honest with you, I'd probably take that. I'm more than happy we're on the green. I still think both of them are real good options. But you see where the limitations of that uh, stronger loft in the ping chipper starts to cause you some possible problems. Now, one other thing I've really picked up on in today's video is something that I actually touched upon in the first review of the chipper. And that was the idea of getting familiar with one particular wedge in your bag. So learning how to play this from a number of different yardages, just getting used to that same address position time and time again. 
And in trying to execute two different shots from the same place on many occasions with these two different chippers today, I've noticed that I'm struggling to switch between the two. So in other words, the lower ball flight on the pink chipper doesn't need quite as much of a swing because it very much fires off the face a little bit different than what the mesel does in popping it up. And uh, I'll try not to demonstrate that now. A little difficult one and a bit of right to left. So we have to take quite a bit off the, uh, the length of swing with the chipper. Is that enough? No, even that's fired on a bit. And it's one of the things that you've got to get used to with the chipper. It's got quite a lively face to say the least. And uh, it does need a little bit of work just to get, I haven't been playing it for a few rounds and already I need to get back into that swing of things. But you'll notice again, slightly different length of swing and you'll see how the ball pops up totally different and I've now pulled up short. So switching between two of these sort of says to me that I wouldn't want two chippers in the bag. Even though we've said Maisel offer this club in four different loft options, I'm not sure I'd want four, I wouldn't want three, two, I just want one of them and I want to get really familiar with it. I'd want to get used to it in terms of that length of swing and make sure I get consistent with just one of these clubs in the bag. Now versatility is key in this department to be quite honest with you and I think that if you're going to put, we've already said about putting the pink chipper in the bag, you're effectively taking one other club out. So what you want to make sure is that you can use this in as many different scenarios as possible. And ping sort of limited on their website suggesting 40 yards in. We're 70 yards out right now and we're going to see how this thing performs because we did give it a go um, on the initial review video at a longer distance and to be honest with you, it performed a lot different than I thought it would, but then how does it compare to when we switch over to the 55 degrees in the mesel? Well, that's a pull, but in terms of a distance, well, I've certainly gone to the back end and flew that just a little bit far, but uh, like I said, a pull with the swing itself, but you can still, still see it's a fairly flat trajectory as you would expect from that loft and uh, that would have had to have been pitched up quite a way short for it to uh, stop on the green. Let's try it with a mesel 55 degrees. That's just a different thing altogether when you start to look at the longer shot. That even had a little bit of spin check if you've just seen on that on the green. So again, different ball flight altogether and you start to see why I initially said that for me ping perhaps need to start looking at adding additional lofts in that chipper range. Now what's interesting is I'm playing a little uh, separate video today which is a bit of a match with some irons and the ping chipper is in that selection of, uh, of irons to choose from. And also there's multiple wedges in that bag as well. But interestingly enough, I find myself in a position like this and it's still the ping chipper that I would actually reach for. Would that be a bad move? Go on, go on. And that's why I just cannot seem to do things terribly wrong with this ping chipper. Yeah, it's never going to be that good or not always going to be that good. But it just seems to me that more often than not, it manages to produce a better shot than I possibly could with an array of wedges that's uh, available to me. Right, one of the big noticeable differences and one thing that we picked up on the ping at the time when we did the review was just how it sits at a dress. It's got a very interesting sort of lie angle, I suppose you'd call it, and it's very upright and almost gave you the kind of uh, sensation of a putting motion. So when you address the ball, it was very much like I said, a putting stroke that you look to emulate. Now what I've tried to do is lay the two clubs flat side by side, and you'll see the mesel has got a sort of a forward lean, if you like. So again, it adopts a different sort of position, more like what you'd expect from one of your wedges. So that's kind of, for me, what we talked about in the initial review, where it was the simplicity of the ping 
And a lot of people said, oh, well, why not use your wedge, your 9-iron, your 8-iron, or whatever it is, to, to, to produce the same shot. And arguably, yes, you could, but I think the shaft angle and lean was very much similar to what you've seen in the Maisel. And the notable difference was how you address the ball with that ping chipper. And I think that was a real positive as well, because it, it put you in the position every single time. And that, that continuity of doing exactly the same thing, being in the same position, was totally different than that of where you would address the ball with your 80 or 9 iron. And it's also very different than how you address the Maisel product as well. I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, but for me, I really like the way that ping chipper sits when you're right behind the ball and you feel like you're in a very, very comfortable position at address. So how do they differ visually? Well, first of all, the interesting thing is they've both got a similar sort of height of face and very much not like what you would see on a full wedge. The sole is uh, very different on the ping in that it's narrow, just like a standard iron, where you've got that wide, almost square, rectangular shape, if you like, in terms of the width of sole on the mesal. And then from the back end, they're very much a cavity back with some different kind of insert. I think it's fair to say, and I mentioned it very briefly, that when you pay £150 or whatever the ping product is, you can see you've got a quality build and a quality product. It's not so good in the mesal, but it's, again, very passable. There's no doubt about it. It's okay. But there are notable differences in that sense. Then from a, a sort of feel perspective, it's interesting because I feel like the ping's just got a little bit of zip out the face and it feels and sounds very good, but it does fire out there a little bit. And that's both good and bad in that, like I said, it's a bit almost helpful if you don't quite get it right. But what you need to do is uh, make sure you get used to that. Almost like when you're chipping with, if you've ever chipped with a hybrid from around the greens and you feel that little bit of pop off it, when you get used to it, it's nice, but in the first instance, you've just got to familiarize yourself with it. So without doubt, the quality build is definitely within the ping. Whether or not it's £100 worth of quality difference, well, that's up for you to decide. Right, so that's it. We'll call it a day. I think I've given you enough information as I possibly can. And don't forget, the idea of this channel is always to bring you this kind of thing, which is options. We've got two very different price brackets here, and one that some will be comfortable with, others will not. So what we like to do is provide you with some kind of choice. And the Maisel product, I said, is a possible solution to the problems that, or potential problems that Ping has. And they're not problems as such, because I think what will happen is I think Ping will further develop that chipper based on how sort of popular this, uh, this first version of it has been, because I think next year, the likelihood is you'll see a Ping chipper with a number of different loft variables. And I think that'll probably be a good move because I do think it's a little bit one dimensional. And I do like the fact that Maisel offer the four different choices in terms of loft. And uh, I think it boils down to how you like to spend your money, to be quite honest with you. There's a great value product in the Maisel. There's a very good quality build in that Ping. And uh, ultimately, I think you've got to not forget the whole purpose of both of the products is to make the chipping game a little bit easier. And I think they do that without fail. And one last thing to mention, I think it's actually improved my chipping game. When we've gone back to reviewing wedges that have been released of late, it's actually given me more consistent and more confident strike of my wedges as well. So it's almost like a training aid getting you back in a more confident rhythm to actually play wedges again. So that's my thoughts on it anyway. I know some of you have got both of the products in the bag, so stick your comments down below, help your fellow golfer and give some feedback and opinion and uh, let them know what you think. And uh, as for me, I'm all done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon.